Here we are, another episode of the Tea and Trails podcast. Thanks to Outdoor Active, Vila Forte, Silver, Active Root, The Centurion, Running Store, Protein Revel, SportsJuice.com, Big Bubble Hats, and X Miles for supporting the show and our community. For the price of a cuppa, you can unlock some sneaky discounts. Big mercies to our patrons who give us a little lift every month. And just uh, keep Gary's medium long run going and my insane PG Tips habit in check. Go over to Patreon and check out all the amazing deals. Also, if you are, want to look as good as I do, just pop over to Summit Crazy and check out our awesome Tea and Trails merch. I even my, treated my middle child to a sticker for his birthday. Tea and Trails podcast sticker, which is now stuck on his sticker beam above oh, his lucky head. Boy. Up there with Harry Kane. <laughs> Hurricane, skiing stickers, and tree and trails podcast. I've seen a few um, people who have VW vans. They like stickering those up too. There's a few tea and trails out there. I on always VW want to do that with our van. Bryn says, no, no, that's not what it's for. It's a <laughs> it's a motorized vehicle for safe transport. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to peel them off, haven't you, one day, if you sell it? I don't think we will ever be able to sell our van. It's got <laughs> one side, it's totally dented, where I ran it into the side of a multi-story car park. And oh. inside is basically <laughs> eight years worth of three children eating croissants inside it. It's r- oh, go I like it place. when I get into a car like that, because it doesn't make me feel so bad about my messy car. <laughs> <laughs> You'd feel so at home. Don't Dog hair, yes, all sorts. <laughs> questionable snack. There's always a questionable snack in the door. If a kid gets in and goes, yeah. "I'm hungry," I'll find something. I'll be like, "Not well. I'm not sure. Uh, I can try. It. Are you really that hungry? <laughs> try that. See what that is." <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, we have another catch up with the coaches, and it was great to have a chat with Zuki Tanduta. What a guy! But before all of that, our listeners and I want to hear about what you have been up to, Eddie. Good week. Bad week. Maybe a bit meh. We really only want to hear about you, Gary, because it's all about you this week. Where's Gary? <laughs> Gary hasn't checked. It's Gary one. Is it the bear the bear? I was getting messages from people I don't even know on Saturday. Have you heard from Gary? Because we haven't uh, he hasn't posted yet. Oh my god, <laughs> guys, get a life. Any I'm only joking. Uh I'll be very Yay! The old Ooh. mug has got his mug. Before we get on to that, let's just, I'll recap and then we'll get to the real good stuff. Oh, it was a good week. At last, at last, Gary, it's been a long time coming. How many weeks? I don't know, because I haven't really, I've let this training sort of just run through without really keeping a, as I said, right back at the beginning, I said, I'm just going to do hill reps once a week, a speed session once a week and a couple of long runs. And I'm not going to make it complicated. So I'm not really sure where I am. <laughs> I've just kept on just repeated, just mixed it up a bit with what fitted in life. So I have no idea. So the other, I thought this was my last week of training last week. And then I realized I've got another week because I was, well, like, I was oh, just no, going to say, got- yeah, it's a taper time now, but no, it's <laughs> no, not. <laughs> I've got another week. I love my scientific process. But at last, last week, I felt great. Oh, my gosh. How long has it been? Really, the whole year, I have not felt good running. It's just been such a struggle, tired, out of breath, running uphill. Anyway, I felt great, as we all know. And I've whined enough. The kids have not had a full day of school for the whole of the year. And then they had their half term. I think it's English half term this week, is it? Next week, next Ooh, week. My goodness me, I don't know. The bank holiday I know for us this weekend. Are your kids sure. at home today, Gary? Because if they are, then no, it's half No, they're term. not at home. No. So it's next week. Possibly. <laughs> He's a bit I'll tired. I'll tell you next week. <laughs> um, so, but mine had this like mini half term break because they're so exhausted. They only had one day at school last week. Gosh, we managed to fill it. <laughs> so we had endless football matches, which they love. Oh my gosh, the the boys live. As anyone that has small boys, what is it? I was like, what is this obsession with? Why I never like gave them a ball and went kick it with your foot, but like they yeah. literally can't even. We have to have indoor footballs, outdoor. Like the obsession with having to kick a ball. I don't it know what must it is. Be something about their developmental. Even watching TV, they can't like sit on the sofa and watch TV. Yeah. 
they have to have like hitting something. If they're not hitting something, they're like fiddling and breaking something. Anyway, it's strange because I've never like with my children. I've never fostered a stereotype, but yeah, it is just pre-programmed in there. If it's a ball, there's, there's a ball. Let's it. kick it against the wall till <laughs> Mum says, "For God's sake!" Anyway, yeah. we, we they had football <laughs> tournaments. Uh, we had one twelve-hour day of football tournaments. Oh my god! Oh my god! And goodness. I made the mistake. I did a ninety-minute run because I thought I'll do all my running, then we'll do the tournament, and uh, then I, the door. Anyway, blah blah blah. Um, uh, I didn't. I had just had a cup of tea then on the way to this football tournament after my run. Oh my god, I got such. And then it was hot, got sunburn, and I had such a bad headache. Oh, didn't have dear. enough tea, so I reckon it was a bit of caffeine withdrawal all day. I did take two flasks. Don't worry, dear listener. I wasn't stupid. I knew what I was going into. There was no way I was having black shot of coffee from the French <laughs> dodgy bouvet. So I'd taken two flasks of tea, but it just wasn't enough. Oh my god, I came back. And I was going to do my strength when I came back and I had to go to bed at six. I was like... Did you sleep straight through then or did you... No. Up? So then I was scared because I was like, oh, go to sleep now. So I just <laughs> got to shut my eyes, took some pretty strong painkillers, had four cups of tea and started to come oh, back. I came back wow. down and Brim was like, are you coming around now? I was like, yeah, cool. I was rough. Anyway, <laughs> they loved it. I love watching my kids play sport as much as I whine about it. There is nothing that gives me more pleasure than watching my kids like be athletic and yeah. challenges. And one of them was one of them was taken off and had a bit of a moment oh. uh, because he wasn't tracking back enough. And he he sort of came round to me. He jumped the fence and he came round to me, and I was like. Go back, Wait. take a breath. This isn't the way to behave. You know, such good life learnings of sport. And then he, yeah. you know, that didn't happen again. And he went back on. And I, I love all that. I love all the, um, I love all the drama. Well, I didn't realise, obviously, when I get took off in a football match, you never go back on. Is that different when the kids they can? I think time because out? they rotate. Yeah, especially in a tournament okay. when they're playing all day. They're like, you play five minutes, especially when they play up front, because obviously the Sutton children are only interested in goal <laughs> hanging. <laughs> Taught well by the dad. <laughs> they're just looking for the goals. Uh, love it. Uh, what else? Well, so anyway, so what did I do running wise? So I had to fit it all in. I did a flat, fast tempo. Oh my gosh, I, my butt cheeks. Uh. I don't run on like and, and for flat. So it was still 600 feet of climbing, but to me, uh, uh, so that's over, I think I did 10K, about 10K, but that was, you know, that's re relatively as flat as you're going to get around here. Oh my, so I did um, 10, I can't remember because I didn't write it down, but it was something like 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, getting faster as you go. So you sort of like, like that sort of thing. But by the time I got to the two minutes... I mean, it was hitting a six minute mile. Oh, my God, I find running fast so hard. Now I'm old. I just I was like, I was blowing out my proverbials. And then I, I didn't give myself enough time to cool down. And then I'm doing like taxi and kids around my hamstrings. I was like, I, was like, I can't change the gear because I'm going oh, into goodness. ramping. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was fun. It was good. To, I love running fast. I forget how much I enjoy running fast. Uh, two long runs, one really lovely long hike with some mates. Um, they wanted to do lots of climbing because they're doing, two of them are doing the maxi races over in Annecy this weekend. Oh, that sounds good. You. I bet they they might be listening to this when they're doing the races. Good luck, good luck. Um, good luck. And they, yes, yeah, so they wanted to do lots of hiking, and I haven't used my poles for the last like month or so because I won't be using my poles on the Southlands way. So we did. A uh, couple of a couple of coals, and then they were like, "We're going to turn around, get back to the vans, but we're going to go up the black up the back of this up the back of the ski piece." So I was like, "It was raining and muddy." I was like, oh, "Sounds lovely." I'm, sure I'm going to get up this. <laughs> we were in like this conga line. They've all got their poles and marching up, and I was like, "Whoa, whoa, oh, guys, guys, going back on like my nails." I can't, I can't get for it. Uh, and my calves were killing me because I think when you use poles, you sort of maybe you go through your calf a bit more. But when when you've got nothing to grip onto and it's that steep, you're just on your yeah. tiptoes. Uh, what kind of angle are we looking at then for this? For well, this a black. I mean, I don't know what classes as a black beast, but it's steep. Sheesh. Every time, and I could see it like then it just you have like two steps where it's less steep, and I was trying to like shake my calf muscles out, going. Oh, and they're just going, bit of bit of, yeah, so then we did that, then we did this. And I'm going, oh, my God, it's good. Uh, and then yesterday I went on a three-hour run. I always find it really hard to do long runs at the weekend. We only, we can't do them on Saturday, obviously, football. Football is live. All done Saturdays. We only have, Bryn and I only have 
Sunday if I don't do my long run and he wants to do his long run too. True, yeah, bridge um, training now. So, so actually he was very good and he got up super early on Saturday morning and did his three-hour run before football. He oh, wasn't the one that then got the headache, it was me, mainly because he was just drinking beer by the buvet. He had the right idea at the football tournament. So I had to go on Saturday and I always find it really hard, even though the kids are fine. I don't know if you get this, I get the guilts of like when it's a family day, if I go out running for a long, an hour, fine but three hours I always find like oh I feel it's bad a long time, isn't it? Yeah. it feels a long time even though one of them wasn't even awake when I left and I knew that they were going to be happy having pancakes doing homework planting the um, vegetables all that I love it yeah if I get home and nobody's stirring it's like okay <gasps> yes I feel so I always feel it but then once I'm out I'm pretty good at switching the switch and being like I <laughs> love this I never want to go home sorry <laughs> we had so- I didn't take Tarka because it was quite warm and she'd been on a long run the day before. So she had a recovery day at home with dad. Uh, it was just me and Lindy. We did lots of, uh, I thought, right, I'm going to try and run every uphill. Just a bit of a little, like, see how I feel. And I was, I was honestly, Gary, I was pretty professional. I was like, this is amazing. I am amazing. I mean, it wasn't very fast, <laughs> but I was able to run. Amazing. I was running <laughs> 4,000 and a bit feet of climbing and I ran pretty much everything like just just tapping up just feeling strong feeling bouncy everything felt strong I'm sure it's the collagen I was like I've <laughs> never been able to normally so that we've got what our long run climb that takes us up into the hills is 2,000 feet and then you're sort of up in the hills and you open up lots of trails and normally I can run up that but then the rest of the run there's a bit more hiking whether I'm just yeah. a bit lazy I don't know but I, I felt great then came down to the centre and then I was like, yeah, because I just felt really good. Lindy, it was just me, Lindy. There was no snow. The bird, the cuckoo was going. Oh. I saw nobody. Oh, it's wonderful. Got a I message from Brin's message from Brin saying, all great at home, had pancakes, doing, you know, planting. So I was like, oh, that's fine. Sometimes I get messages, you know, going, all kicking off. So, and I'm like, oh, no. Don't yeah, even I don't want to know that. that. <laughs> it, yeah, it's a piece. The, truck the, the waterfalls are all still really flowing because the snow is still, oh, it's just amazing. I felt amazing. Lindy felt amazing. We loved it. It was like a dream. It was lovely. a dream. I didn't even listen to a podcast. I, so I was saying this earlier, just the quiet and just listening to my heavy breathing as I was going up. Anyway, I was in this zone. I was loving it. Didn't see anybody come down to where our little lake is. I always take a picture there if you follow me on Strava. Never see anybody. Suddenly come around the corner and there's this like a hundred fishermen around the lake. No car parking spaces. People everywhere. All these fish. There must have been like some trout. Who can, what do you compete for in fishing? Who can fish the biggest fish? (laughs) Yes, weird, isn't it? Yeah. And Lindy was obviously quite hungry now, <laughs> going to the end of our long run. She just stuck her head straight in the fisherman's, either his picnic or his maggots, whatever it was. Anyway, I heard, could hear the shouting. <laughs> I just pegged it straight through. Pretend she's not mine. She appeared then, going, <laughs> licking her chop behind me, but I dropped off. Uh, there's a road, there's a oh, road wow. from the lake, or you can take the like little single track that not many people know about. And I was like, Lindy, we're taking the track. Quick, disappear. So had, Somebody oh, in oh, France of oh, the oh, efficient see. podcast will be talking about you now. You <laughs> 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 anyway, it was a good week. And uh, uh, now I get another week bonus trading that I didn't realize. So I'm just going to um, do that again. I feel good, but I am enjoying a recovery day and a day of everyone's out. The house is quiet. It's a total disaster. Yeah, Looks well, like Charles done. Burglary, but... No, no. never. No. I was telling this to my running friends. You'd never do chores when the kids are at school. That's for when they come home. Like okay. they were like, oh, we've got to go back because we've got admin, you know, phone calls. To and I'm like, no, 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 no. You do that when they're at home, when they're around. When they're not there, you do all the good stuff. Oh, like keeping up with I'm the Kardashians. Up. I've got it wrong. The... <laughs> no, that's what, when they get home. That's when you make them do it. Get those over out, kiddos. Get your step count up. Anyway, I'm happy. I felt good. Good week with all the juggle as well. Anyway, no one's interested in all that. I tell you because I like to share it and you're the only person I talk to all week. Oh, it sounds awesome. What a week you've had. And what a time to have a good week. I think that's wonderful timing. I felt confident. And my uh, my friend who is crewing me for Satan's Way, he's on it. He sent me like, right, what we need, deets, we need timing, we need... 
he's he's oh, already yes. he's prepping me i love it because i'm quite like oh yeah whatever he's like can you give me checkpoint times blah it's like oh, i'm gonna actually have to do a bit of preparation oh, yeah, i love it i love it normally just yeah i don't know it makes me a bit anxious but i do need to get maybe it's quite a good thing he get my head in the game yeah 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 bit of focus <laughs> but eddie that's one thing you need in your life bit of focus <laughs> right come on let's start from the beginning and work Ooh. from the beginning of your week right up to when you became old candy tops champion okay okay well you know i did say that week was just going to carry on as a normal week and the old county tops was going to be a long run well that never panned out i forgot lisa was away she went down to see her mum and brother in essex so i was home alone with the kids and monday to tuesday was just a massive struggle trying to just fit it all in try to plan the week yeah it was a bit of a funk to be honest <laughs> my mind wasn't uh in a good place trying to do the things i wanted to do and just couldn't do it i missed one of my strength sessions and then I knew that was going to, I was going to pay for that later on the week because I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to be too close to the old county tops. So I just, I think Tuesday, I just said, you know what, this is going to be a bit of a mini taper week then. That's, that's what it's going to be. And as soon as I made that decision that the kind of the grey clouds lifted and I felt much better um, about that. And then, yeah, I think I did race effort stuff and the rest of it was just this general aerobics, some strides, two strength sessions, actually one more core focused and one full body. And that was it. I don't think, did I run on Friday? I'm not 100% sure actually if I run on Friday. I don't have to double check uh, Strava. But if I did, it would have been like four miles or something. Nothing crazy. But yeah, then we headed over to, uh, ooh, where we go? Grassmere on Friday night just to keep the admin pretty relaxed for Saturday. So only like a 15 minute drive in the morning. I banged on quite a lot about it. But what it is, is about 35 miles if you get the lines correct. It's a fell race, so it's you basically make your own way to each checkpoint. There's a few areas where they say, you know, don't climb a fence. They planted some new trees here. Don't, you know, be considerate of landowners and the environment. But fundamentally, you go to Scarthel Pike, sorry, Helvellyn, Scarthel Pike, and the Old Man of Connaissance, about 35 miles and 10,000 feet of elevation too. So it's not an easy runnable route. They are some runnable bits, but it's so boggy, those bits, that you're not really getting much running done. You know, you're tripping over, you're going knee, knee deep in a bog. But it's a great day out and a proper adventure. So yeah, if you can find a buddy and you're confident, you know, I think the cutoff times when I first did it, I was a bit intimidated by it. So yeah, check the details. Don't just enter it and then have quite a stressful day. Pay it the respect it deserves. But yeah, it's a wonderful adventure. Um, and a great route as well. If you're looking at do, going and doing something in the mountains in Europe in the summer, it's actually a yeah. really great route to get that much elevation over 35 miles. English races, I, I'm trying to, I'm struggling for something else. That's as spicy as that, you know, teenager with attitude, that is mile for mile more aggressive, but because it's over in four hours, it's it's a much more forgiving yeah. day. Yes. You know, six or seven <laughs> six or seven miles into this, and you're like sixty six or seven hours into this, you're thinking, oh wow, we've still got kind of two or three to go, depending on how it how the day goes. But yeah, it's awesome, awesome route. Again with a fell running race. You have to self-nav. You can't rely on your GPS watches. So, Are you allowed you know, your like GPS watches for this? You can wear it to record the um, the event, but you can't have a map on there to, okay. to guide you through. And some of the lines, yeah, you know, like I said, enter it, but pay the respect it deserves because a lot of the lines are just trod through bogs. So you have to... You have to be confident with a map and a compass or have nav or have navigated the course and recce days like that. But yeah, it was wonderful. We did see quite a few guests. It was a bit of like a past guest. <laughs> Me, it was James Parsons there, Charlie Parkinson, Tom Hollands and Lisa Watson. But I didn't see Lisa at all during the race, but she won. Her and her mate Despina won the uh, ladies race and she had a stonking like sub eight hours. And to put that in context, I can't really fathom she obviously she won the Dragon's Back race and she won the Northern Traverse race. And they are obviously two standout performances. But I can I know what sub eight hours is on this course. So she can do the full I range of take you. Oh, we were just uh, we were just over nine hours. Um Oh, oh. oh. You, yeah, that, so you she, were clicking on her heels. <laughs> well, <laughs> she was gone before we got to the field. <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. I, did, I didn't know she was on the starting line. And when I saw her name on the, the leaderboard, it was pretty awesome to see. But yeah, she she was moving. That was some day of running. And what I love about this race, because for me, I'm not racing the race. It's I'm racing age groupers. But you have no way of knowing apart from, you know, somebody you think, oh, they look about 
V100 combined age. But other than that, you really don't know who it is. So there's lots of um, jeopardy. And, uh, you know, I'm asking, Neil's a bit embarrassed because I ask everybody how old, if I think they look about our age, I'm asking them how, <laughs> how old they are. Eight o'clock starts. So it's nice and early. It is a bit early, but because, you know, we were. A long day. Six, yeah, we were like 16th. So we were relatively high in the field finishing. And it took us nine hours. So you have to set off quite early mm. to get back mm. and enjoy enjoy the rest of the day. But yeah, had a chat with Tom Hollands on the start line just as we ran. I'm not 100% sure if he knew I was Eddie, but... Uh, <laughs> were you not merched up to the hills? We were merched up, yeah. He didn't, but he didn't acknowledge uh, Tea and Trails uh, podcast. And then, you know, no dramas. Went up to Hel- Helvell and saw Charlie Parkinson. Um, but like you were saying about your friends chatting, there were some people around us chatting and me and Neil are like, don't know one word answers in our conversations. And some like, people just have the ability to go uphill and chat and i just i'm a breather yeah. i i need oxygen gary and i just can't <laughs> do it i i'm and i'm not ashamed of it i'm like so, i can't talk sorry no 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 we we couldn't talk but these two there's a man and a woman they just breeze past us chatting away all the way up uh dolly wagon which anybody who's been on dolly wagon that is a steep, steep climb. And we did, we lost a few places. So we summited Hellvell and we lost a few places coming off there because Neil and I, we're not, we're not fell runners. You know, we're not really naturally fast coming off a steep uh, hill like that. And, you know, Hellvellans, that way that we come off it isn't that aggressive. But anyway, we lost some places. That was it. We filled our bottles up, got some egg sandwiches, headed off to Scarfell Pike. And that is when the heat, it was just like somebody turned up the oven. It was insane. Every stream, every little puddle, I was dunking my hat, filling up my bottle. Um, it was amazing. Just like you said with the fishermen, all these nobody's normally there at that um, lake. When we got to Angle Tarn, it was just like a little holiday camp. It was amazing. And if it, <laughs> it was quite a big stretch, and I was so pleased. I had two bottles with me. Normally, I would have went one, but the forecast was suggesting that. Well, the forecast was, was a bit cloudy than the actual rally. It was such a hot day, but yeah, so pleased I took two bottles. Um, but yeah, I got to Angle Tarn. It was just so busy. It was absolutely beautiful. Another day. I could have just sat in that town for oh. a few hours, had a picnic. It was absolutely glorious. But yeah, topped up. And then we headed off to uh, the climb up to Scarfield Pike, which is not as bad because you've you, you've already done some climbing. You've to done get some elevation, town. haven't you? Yeah, yeah, you've already there, started yeah. that climb. Uh, but it's still quite spicy, but just guzzling water so much. And I was out with Lisa uh, during the week and our little six-mile trail run, I must have had about six weeks. <laughs> and she's like, God to say, Gary, I had about one way at this point. It was, the, And I was just drinking and drinking and drinking. Mm. So that tells the tale of that. I didn't feel dehydrated. That wasn't, um, yeah, that didn't wasn't the kind of story of my day. On the way to Scarfa Pike, we saw a friend, Aaron. It was quite nice. He timed his run to bump into us. Um, and this is where I let myself down, really, I think. I wish I was that runner who would say, have a little chat with Aaron for five minutes and, oh, how's it going? Mm. I'm just mm. like... I say so yeah. 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 I've got like where we used to live is very near the South Downs Way when I'm gonna where I'm gonna do the, the next race. I've got friends going, Well come out, we'll come and bring the kids and we'll come and cheer you and I'm like, you know, you know I won't like yeah. I literally will run past you. I'm really sorry, I haven't seen you for fifteen years, but you're I not know. gonna get anything. <laughs> you're just gonna get a high five and a maybe a sweaty hug. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But, but it's uh, seconds it's, you've got your racing cap on. Yeah, and it, you know yeah. that. See if, if we did that. Lisa Watson wasn't meeting friends and taking her time for sure. <laughs> maybe, she, maybe she was, but we lost out on the win. I'm just kind of fast forwarding it. We lost out on the win by two minutes uh, of the V100 category. I think it was about two minutes. So yeah, all these you know little pauses they accumulate. So yeah, if we, if we'd have stopped to chat to Aaron for five minutes and we'd have lost by two minutes, I'd have been devastated with that. So I Raging think with Aaron, you know, Aaron would have taken the wrath of Gary. <laughs> I'd have been raging with myself, but when we saw her and we didn't go by we looked over and we looked behind us and we just saw this train of runners coming oh, it was just like is oh, there anything my. worse i mean is there anything worse that gives you more anxiety than in a race <laughs> and you turn around and for me well, when the- i see another woman and i'm like <laughs> well i was quickly trying to scan their faces if they were like a, a, you know a woman that didn't matter because they weren't How in many the wrinkles? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you go to angle town it's quite not not hilly, but it's rolling landscape, I suppose, that section. So you look behind you and there's like there's nobody there. So I was quite relaxed for 
probably mm. over an hour and then all of a sudden just turned around but you you could then see the, all, all the landscape behind you because you got some elevation it was like oh shit i don't need oh i shouldn't have swore lisa tells me off she told me off for swearing too much on the podcast <clears throat> do you so, swear i never even noticed i use the s word quite a lot apparently <laughs> that's but why yeah. we've got explicit content on spotify what it is. That and the jugs <laughs> and the nips. <laughs> so <my fault. laughs> but yeah, then what do we do? Yeah, we saw it in Scarfield Pike and all the nav paid off. You know, we, I was saying, oh, I'm not too sure if I've got it right. I can't remember it. We did ship quite a few places coming off Scarfield Pike, but that's again because we quite gingerly descenders. We're not really confident. But we did see James Parsons. It was quite nice to have a little chat with James on the way down, even though he's a Luton fan and Luton just uh, scuppered Sunderland's chances of potential Premier League status next season but yeah we saw James and that was quite nice but then they all this is funny they all drifted off down to Scarfield Pike down off Scarfield Pike but as soon as we got to the uh, base and it was more runnable we caught the wall up again and even went past quite a few I have this little tactic story of my um, life Gary that story of my life is they all come past in the descent and as soon as I have to start running well around here they all just start walking again yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I have to run full pelt for like 10 minutes to catch up and then they all start walking I'm like why are you all walking again People just love running downhill. I know. I wish yeah. I was better at running faster. But these downhill. are so steep. There's, I, it, literally, you're breaking downhill. I think that's all, or coming off Scarfell Pike. But it was good. Yeah, we could start running. I always, like, my little tactic with Neil is, you know, if the landscape's rolling, I always visualize my local trails and I go, look, I'd run this locally. And then yeah, I always yeah, like, yeah. and I always like say, look, we'll just do 20 seconds, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, and then we'll just do that. And it just seems to, I don't know, it turns maybe a 20 minute mile into a, 17 minute mile it really you know mm. in the accumulation of that and we did we just slowly kind of caught all these people back up there was a few there was definitely one point where we took a really efficient line these guys took a kind of high curve and we just cut through the bog uh leapfrogged a few people and then we ended up at a place called Cockley Beck which again I let myself down here I told Neil off he wanted a cup of tea and um, I was like Neil the clock's ticking and he he did so well he had this cup of tea and I didn't even know he'd had his cup of tea he was such an efficient tea drinker it was amazing sounds like a friend of mine <laughs> well drilled Neil well done I, I felt terrible when I said it but it just blah I just blah, I couldn't stop myself <laughs> but I, but I, I said, for this. come on I was like, clock's ticking, clock's ticking. Oh, but, Gary! <laughs> I know. <laughs> but what I did, because I assessed this, I don't know if it was carnage or people chilling out, but there was a few trees there, so people who had their shoes off, they were just kind of getting themselves back together. And oh, we yeah. must have, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't checked the results, but we must have leapfrogged maybe 10 pairs of Cockley Beck. Love because we it. Just topped up. point games. Yeah, yeah. It was great. We just saw them all there, and I thought, right, this is this is our. I'm taking our your time, to, <laughs> our time, to time to shine. To shine. No <laughs> athletic ability and no cups of no, tea. No, no, just don't <laughs> rest. <laughs> so I got an egg sandwich, I think, and uh, yeah, off we went up to Old Man Coniston. And this is this is really good because we wrecking this last week, and there was a few different choices for Old Man, and luckily. Everybody just went the way that we were going to go anyway. So there was no second guessing it, no wasting time faffing on with Nav. And yeah, and it was good, just straight to Old Man. And when you get to Old Man, there's this the only point in the race where there's an out and back. So you get to see, obviously, the runners coming towards you. And that's when we started doing the B100. B100. <laughs> yeah, the <wrinkle> test. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't, nobody popped up on our radar that really it was like a red flag. So we were How quite. How are your knees? <laughs> Do your knees hurt in the morning? <laughs> no. Right. Off. So yeah, there was no red flag. So I was like, okay, nice and relaxed. And then my men, my mindset was then we'd gain so much ground leaving Cockley Beck. I really didn't want to ship any time to the people behind us. And the terrain was in our favor then because these guys were climbing. And then when we'd summited, predominantly we were going down. So their miles would have been 20 minute miles. We could have been yeah. doing 10, 12 minute miles. Six. So yeah, six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Neil got cramp. He fell over. He tripped over. That's because he, you didn't he... allow him to rehydrate. <laughs> so dehydrated. I know. I'm t- I should have managed that better. But yeah, he's he wonderful. You know, he just had his salt tablet, stretched. You know, I stretched his feet. Up he got, and that was it. No, no dramas. Shout him. We don't have time for this. We no don't time, have time for cramp. For no time. <laughs> and I'm so glad we didn't see the people who actually won the V100 because that would have really, I would have just got such a the game face on then. And that would have been that pretty torturous last six or seven miles. I was trying to chase these people down. 
And yet, do the Kim Kim are, oh my goodness me, bleat on, plus bleat on, pretty gentle running, done through a campsite along the road to the finish. Came in 16th place, slower time than last year, but we were 49th the first year we did it, 28th last year, 16th this year. So getting better every time. And I just think we fared pretty well considering the heat, like the people yeah, who won the amazing. V100. I think we did great. Like the V100, the people who won it, Last year, they were an hour ahead of us. So they'd their time, they'd pretty much lost an hour on the day while we'd probably last, maybe, lost maybe 10 minutes over that time. We did see on reflection, or we could see the V100 winners um, as before they turned to bleat on. And luckily, like I say, I didn't know it was them. So I would have just been like a like a red, red yeah, flag. Neil to a and ball you up. might not have been friends <laughs> by the end of that. <laughs> so I'm quite pleased I didn't know it was them because, yeah, I would have, I would have sprinted. But in, in, we crossed the line, the guy said we're second and we didn't know top three get a mug. We just thought it was the, the winners get a mug. So Neil was devastated because he was like, oh God, two minutes. And I was like, well, it is what it is. And uh, luckily the guy was like, you know, we got a little call out and we got Bungawa. Old County Tops. It's a lovely month. mug. Look at the rim of that. I love a it's thick rim, beautiful. Gary. It's I love yeah. the thick rim. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at that. So I've had about 10 cups of tea out of this. I've not left this T-shirt. I've been <laughs> in bed with me. I love the T-shirt too. <laughs> it's yeah. old and school, it's, that T-shirt. It is, yeah, I've got three of these now, and it's just a, it's just such a wonderful race. The only reservation I have is, and it's nothing to do with the race, because I never treat it like an air race until I'm there on the day, and then it is a race. <laughs> so I can, <laughs> I can never really do it justice. I'd love that on a T-shirt. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is not an A race till it's the day of the race, and then it's a race. <laughs> you are so classic. But it's, yeah, just a sensation. I just reinforce how well uh, Lisa Watson did. I just blew, when I saw her name on the on the on the on the leaderboard and the time she did, I was just blown away by that. But yeah, got to say, massive thanks to everyone at the Old County Tops team and the Marshals too. I hope everybody uh, this was available to everybody. But the Marshals at Coniston had actually carried water over there, which, um, you know, we were lucky we got it. We were like pretty high up in the field, I suppose, top 16. Um, but yeah, to lump litres of water ball, man, at Coniston is, uh, that is some commitment Did to the cause. Did you hear at Ultra Trail Snowdonia, they were only allowed to fill up one water bottle? I heard something. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, didn't kind of hear the details, but oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. Water yeah. rationing. That is not, that's water. dangerous. That's dangerous game to play, isn't it? Well, if that um, came back to bite them on the backside, if somebody dehydrated or something, that is, uh, yeah, that is a dangerous game to play. But yeah, it's just a wonderful race. One of my favourite races. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to go back next year because of just, as a, <laughs> I always laugh when I call myself an athlete, but as an athlete, I'm not ready to chill. I'm not ready to sit at Angleton and have a sandwich and put my take my socks and shoes off. I'm not ready to if I bump into a mate on the trails, um, spend that time with them. I'm not there yet in my head. I'm still want to be quite still a contender. I'm still a contender. <laughs> so I don't know if I can go at the well again. I'm not know if I'm just and I'm chasing so many things that you know, like this year, there's Dragons Back Race, there's Lake and Hundreds. I'm just yeah, I'm feeling a bit of mental fatigue with uh that side of things. If I can keep going back to the well like that. But yeah, wonderful race. I'd recommend it to anybody, but I would pay the respect it deserves because the nav, you need to be you need to be committed to the nav, otherwise it's gonna be a horrendous day. And the elevation per mile and the attrition of eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours out on your feet. Yeah. Takes its toll. Like I, I I was more I was very anxious of teenage with altitude. But the reality of that, because it was over in four hours, it was it was okay. While although I felt within myself aerobically quite comfortable on on this race, but my ankles are aching and oh, just that ankles, yeah, everything that body fatigue. Yeah, it's like it's being good. like you've been in the punch bag for quite a yeah. few hours, <laughs> and then you sit in the car for three hours and drive home. You know, it's not <gasps> your not hamstrings. Well, just like my, I know exactly because I did a forty-five minute flat speed session, so I know exactly how you feel being <laughs> racing in the car afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to give a shout out to the nutrition though. The guys from X Miles, they sent us some, sent me some bits and bobs to try. Didn't try them during the race. Obviously, that's a big no, no, nothing new. But before the race, um, we had some of their, oh, it's the 
raw velo. I've never had that brand before, some organic energy bar. So I had that kind of munching that in the little fields before the race. Then afterwards, I had a, it's called, I've never used this brand before, Victor's Protein Water. And I had major- He's Victor. And why is he well, sharing yeah. his water? <laughs> I had major like food fatigue. I just didn't really want anything sweet. But yeah, I managed to get this down. But during the race itself, I was on a mixture of Protein Rebel Gels, uh, Vela Forte Chews, and I was interested because oh, I heard a few cues. people. Oh, they are good. How good but I had are they? some. Fe- I had some feedback, uh, and this was from the UTS Snowdonia that they melted. Whatever they were carrying them in, they all melted together. Shoot. So they. But I used your tip. I had two Ziploc bags, one full of Kenderman Kick, uh, just the original stuff, not the. I know they did like a sporty one. Mine was just the Romney's classic, and then the Vela Forte and some gels and a soft flask, two soft flasks with um, active root. And I was pretty Isaac High on sugar. I must have been hitting 80 to 100 grams of <laughs> we carbohydrate. Oh, Neil, no tea. We're, not, we're taking you all down. <laughs> Sorry, he's had the maple syrup gels. Just back away. I did feel a bit pukey because of the, the heat, I think, uh, and just that effort. Mm, um, but yeah, it yeah, all stayed yeah. down and nothing was really triggering me like before when i say did the world green round i just couldn't even look at a snickers yeah. it was just like oh, get that away from me so yeah all of that was fantastic really enjoyed it and it's just like i said it's a wonderful race you get to run in a team it is just magic yeah that's my 2023 You're a legend old county tops hopefully yeah did i <laughs> i rattled through that hopefully i made sense <laughs> I loved it. I love the story. Oh. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And oh. I just wonder how many days you're going to wear that T-shirt for. So it's starting to... Well, I cut little... the grass yesterday. I've walked the dog. The neighbours have spotted me in it. So they've been talking about me. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Just a talk. visit to the co-op. <laughs> just a visit to the co-op now to do. And then everyone will know. <laughs> uh, it's probably more of a conversation that Gary's cut his grass than me wearing the T-shirt for multiple days. <laughs> I cut my grass this week too, though I have a child that cuts grass for me now. Oh my gosh, such a satisfying job. And I just watch him because I'm worried he's going to look, he's going to mow off his toes. But it's very, it's very... Uh, relaxing and I'm like do you want me to take over he's like no mum then he started getting the strimmer out I was like no 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 lawn mowing I can cope with you are not strimming well, one of the kids dogs is uh to pick up Rex's dog poo in the garden if Rex has done his <gasps> no business. I would not trust my children to do that they well he never did that up. he never did that and I cut the grass and had a bit of dog poo <laughs> lawn <mowing. laughs> <laughs> so it was like it was really born dry so it was like powdered dog poo oh that's all right you can wipe that off that happens to me all the time it's the wet stuff that you've got to <laughs> wash <laughs> but i had an awesome week yeah 93 miles uh some i think 83 miles of running 23 hours and forty and a half thousand feet of elevation a couple of strength sessions I just feel nourished. Good time away with friends. I'm on so jealous. I'm so well gel. I want to be I, there with you, Gary. Wow, we could do the mixed teams one year. Mixed team. Can you imagine me shouting at you from the bottom of scaffold? Oh. Come on, you pussy. Get yourself down there. <laughs> <laughs> you and I going uphill together. Would people be like, what's wrong with those two? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be yeah, tell you off for drinking the tea. <laughs> <gasps> you would you would get short shrift. You get a tea in your face. Then I'd be now I have to have another one. <laughs> Scalding hot tea in my face. <laughs> but yeah, Neil, Neil, like I said to him, I'm really sorry, Neil. Um did you have your cup of tea? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> he like when they give them their bottles to fill up, he'd like jump chugged his cup of tea within that like 30 seconds. He was like He's a Formula One tea. I yeah. love it. I love it. That is my sort of standards. Yeah. You're gonna get it down. No, not even Gary's gonna stop him with that cup of tea. Talk about dedication to the cause. Three years of graft. And somebody, a friend of mine, noted it was just basically because we tipped into the different age group. <laughs> that maybe had some. Shut up, to... <laughs> whoever that friend is, be friend immediately. No, you've gone up but through yeah. the rankings. That's a pretty impressive improvement. Nothing yeah. down to the fact you now know the route and you've trained for 24 hours <laughs> for the last six weeks. There's nothing. Nothing I'm doing with that. This week's brew with the coach's question comes from Ian Brazier. He would like some advice on stopping the last 25 miles of a 100 miler feeling so hard and becoming so slow or run, walk. I hear you, Ian. That is my 100% my experience. Please help me too. (laughs) I'm so glad you asked this question. (laughs) 
this week's Brew of the Coaches comes from Ian Brazier. Now, yeah, I'm quite keen with this one because I've done a few hundred milers and although I expected them to be quite a tough last 25 miles, um, yeah, I just kind of owned it and that's what it was. But I'll be really interested to see what you guys have to say. Ian would like some advice on how to stop the last 25 miles of a hundred miler feeling so hard and becoming a slow run walk. Who's going to go first with this one? Oh, let me. I'm dying to. Ian, <laughs> it's 100 miles. The last 25 miles are going to be really hard. You're going to slow, run, walk. Whatever happens, everybody in the field is going to be suffering in that last 25 miles. You need to prepare yourself mentally that that last 25 miles is going to be the tough, one of the toughest things you've ever done. Whatever you see on Instagram and Facebook, anybody that says it is any other way is a liar. Okay, that's the truth. But how can you get there in a better state? Okay, so you basically, it's going to really hurt. You have to face up to the fact that 100 miles is a hell of a long way. That's many, many steps. And it's going to be really hard. The body's going to want to stop. Most of all, the mind is going to want you to stop at that point. And the biggest thing that last 25 miles will all agree, it's not physical, it's mental. And it's getting yourself in that mental frame of mind, your why, why you want to finish this, why you're going to keep moving. And the way you get there, the biggest thing, Thing. No, you can talk about training, you can talk about strength, you can talk about conditioning, but actually the biggest thing on race day is the fueling. The fueling and the pacing by sensible pacing at the start and fueling from the beginning, basically you're setting yourself up for that last 25 miles. The other 75 miles don't count. That last 25 miles is when the race happens. And if you have sensibly paced and you fueled for the whole of the day, not just, you know, stop fueling then or not, stu- not fueled early enough, that 25 miles will feel slightly easier in the fact that you're giving brain and your brain energy to make right decisions and to stay positive. It's going to hurt. And I think a lot of us would do better by facing the fact that it's nothing to be afraid of, the fact that you're going to be in a deep amount of pain and that everybody is in that boat and but it's not forever working through, (laughs) chunking it down. And the minute you go over the finish line, if you finish, though you'll be sore and you'll be hobbling around and sitting on the toilet, will have issues. You will, it will go that, that mental, like I can't do that, that will go. So it is mainly brain related and that is fuel and pacing. Um, A lot of training as well needs to go into the strength of that back end of a hundred miler. But I would say the first thing you need to look at in is your pacing and your fueling at the beginning of the race to set you up for a better end of race. And of course, just being as tough as nails, like all of us. (laughs) It's mad, isn't it? The amount of times, I don't know if this is a problem for Ian, but the amount of times I'll talk to somebody after a long race and they go, oh, I didn't eat for five hours. And I'm just thinking... Why didn't you find something that you could eat uh, or whatever it was, drink, drink your energy, however you do mm, it. But yeah, mm, it's like a real mm. puzzle because like you say, if you are struggling with calories, then that manifests in so many different ways. I think whatever race you do, the last quarter is going to be hard. Like that, you know, you're, you're racing and it's, and it's tough. You know, we all, we're all giving our, our, our rules. So it's, it's going to be hard if it's not hard by the end of a hundred miler, um, you know, you're not working hard enough and you, you basically need to up your game in. <laughs> so yeah, you should, you should be in a pain cave by then. <laughs> I think the end, the last, you know, the last bit of a tough race like that, I think it's, it's all mental. You've got to have a, you've got to define your attitude at the start. Um, and you've got to enjoy the process. You've got to enjoy that suffering and get in bed with it, I think. So, you, you know, think about I don't think much at all, actually, when I'm running. Um, I just, oh, just I, running. That's yeah, not just running. That. I don't think much at all. <laughs> <laughs> Full stop. And it's, and it's done me wonders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but So I would say think less, do more. Um, mm. And uh, another, another thing I tend to do when I'm in that last, especially in the last marathon, I think it's just a marathon. And I'm like, oh, it's just a half. And then I go into running routes that I normally do, which are set distances. And I think I just need to do this and I just need to do that. So it's it's about breaking it up and maybe having, I like to visualize routes. So for example, like I said, with the routes, I like to visualize routes that I do often and it becomes manageable then. So that's that's kind of what I do. I think you've got to have a good, you've got to have a good mental game to stay positive, keep smiling, 
smiling is super important and say hello and thank you to people like, you know, marshals have a bit of banter with people on route because however tired you are, banter will always make you feel better. Uh, so if you see someone else more miserable than you, I always suck that up. I love other people's misery. You know, have a good <laughs> laugh. If someone's in the pain cave and they're crying on the side, yes, suck up that, <laughs> suck it all up. <laughs> I love I it. Love it's it. horrible, but I love going past somebody who's broken. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big lift. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I know they're not going to come back. It's like, yes, that's another one. <laughs> oh my God, you two at Dragon's know, Bear. Savage, savage. Remember you have to go and see each other in the evening. So like, Trish, if you just kick Gary as you go past, it's going to be an awkward meal that evening. And you're like, oh, you made it back, mate. Oh God. Well, we, yeah. your stuff's Well back. done. <laughs> So it's going to, it's going to be hard. You've got to, you've got to find positives. You've got to get in, get in bed with that pain cave. And uh, I think like key thing, like Eddie said, is don't fear it, except that it's going to happen. And just, you've got to roll with that. Let it become part of your race and enjoy the journey that you're on. But a bit of tough love there. I think he's, I think he's asking for tough love here. He, he wants to run a hundred miles. He knows it's not going to be easy and he just needs some, a bit of reassurance that we've all been there, I think. Sometimes when people do their first ultras, I think it's a bit like having a baby. You can't explain it until you've been there. And then they go, oh, I get it. I get why you want to do it. The end result's really good, but the actual process is pretty terrible. I mean, it's brutal. Like, when you're giving everything, nobody gets, I mean, some of, the, some of the states my body has been in at the end of some of these races, it's horrific. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's just, it's not that it's, it's just, that's how it is. That's what you're invested in. That's why you're there. You know, Do you, if you want Trisha's number, Ian, we can pass it over <laughs> for that last marathon. And I, I reckon she would just talk you through um, any, any, any of your concerns. She'd be, she'd shout them down. <laughs> Russell, I mean, I dread to think what Russell's going to say now. No, I think oh. it would be very harsh on Ian. So, I mean, <laughs> I coach men and women and I do find, I have to say, you know, talking in general terms, women do seem to be better at this stuff than men. Hey, and probably, there we go. <laughs> there's all sorts of reasons why, and I have no idea what they are, but. We're just tough again. Truth be just told, tougher. yeah. It's, <laughs> I've dropped out and um, I did a 25 lap race on the track and I dropped out at lap 24. So I'm in your boat, Ian. I'm weak, mortal, not <laughs> same as you are. So maybe the tough it out thing isn't always going to work for us because we're just not tough enough. But still in that case, you can jump into my boat and we can be weaklings together. And in that um, scenario, Eddie's definitely right. The belly and the brain, I call it, because that's alliterative. So it's you know, easier to remember. Belly, brain, that's all you need to think about. If you're starting your fueling strategy early on, making sure that's nailed in, practice that in your long runs. There's no point just starting afresh on the race day. You need to have really rehearsed that and try to up Somewhere to around 90 grams of carbs an hour is what people are saying now. And I personally, I'm a great runner and I've never got to that number. So just working on what you can do and trying to up that slowly. But that's the number that you know, people are touting out now is actually being possible. And it definitely makes a big difference just getting that energy into your brain so you don't get those dips. And it is psychology where if you start to feel low, your brain just starts to shut your body down and it becomes physical quite quickly. Um, something that's helped me personally, um, is if it's another hundred miler or a B race, actually practicing negative splits. So you're saying the last quarter you're worried about. So how about you flip the race on its head? And if it was, um, for instance, a hundred miler, you run the first 25 miles, like a joke, like so slowly, like you couldn't even go any slower if you tried, like it's as slow as you can go. And then build into the race so that you actually feel that you've got something left and you're looking forward to taking the brakes off on the last 25 miles. And then you work back that way slowly. Okay, well, then I did that with 25 miles. Could I actually extend that to uh, half the race and run the first 50 miles slow and the next 50 miles quicker? That's how I do it. I break it down, chunk it, like Eddie said. But, you know, just fully aware that it's going to be hard and just that awareness helps knowing that it's coming and not being taken uh, by surprise by that. And that in itself is, is, is going to set you in good stead. So you can put the stuff in training that you need to. 
I'm a man, so I feel I can say this without kind of set myself up. Yeah. <laughs> what we're <laughs> calling? <laughs> but do you think men are just like? <laughs> do you think men are just like super confident, and then when it gets a bit confident, it's the yeah, whole society and everything. Men just think they're the bee's knees; they don't need to do the training. Um, the whole of society is just set up to you know, make us think that we're extra special, and then the women come out and kick our ass. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, she'll, she'll hate that I've actually announced this on the podcast, but she's talking about maybe entering the Lakeland 50 when she's 50. Wow, oh man. And that's a, that's quite a few years away. So it's not like me. I just go, I'm going to chuck my name in the hat and see what see what, see what what happens. Yeah, she's got a real pragmatic and uh, mature approach to it. While, yeah, I just call enter, enter, I, enter. As long as the debit card I, I went the through. Key, then. <laughs> I really think the key difference with men and women is that men are more results focused than women. Yeah. So, like mm-hmm. you know don't get me don't get me wrong i want to do as well as i possibly can but i'm less like for me it's more about that process and the enjoyment of you know like being the best i can and competing against mates and you know have it's 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 more, much more about that process than the end product of, of results and i think guys are much more result driven like you know i'm oh i'm you know and you'll see it a lot i think in in more of the top end races where if guys aren't having a good race, they'll drop. Uh, whereas with the top end of the women's races, you very rarely see women drop. Uh, you know, the top 10 runners, very rarely do they drop out. Boston Marathon is on right now. It just reminds oh, yeah. me of a story where Desiree Linden, it was that year when it was absolutely howling, pissing with rain and gale force winds. Yeah. And Desiree Linden went to the toilet, came out, found Shanae Flanagan. She's like, my race is over, so I'll just help you. And so they ran together and then yeah. at 20 miles, Sine and Flanagan was like, oh God, Desiree, you're kicking my ass. And she went on and won the whole race. She's the first American yeah. winner. In That's like amazing, isn't it? But she was just, I'm going to stick it in and do it and enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. My friend, whereas the men, loads of men dropped out with, you know, hypothermia. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca, come on, Rebecca, what do you think? From uh, Why is it that we find the back end of these races, whatever distance ultra racing or marathon, even the last, is it the brain? Is it the body? Is it everything mixed together? Why the back end of these races are so hard? It is a combination of everything, but I think definitely brain, isn't it? And I think maybe women are just a bit better at sort of that psychological preparation as well. I think certainly visualization and all of those sorts of things, those psychological techniques that we can use to pull us through at the end. Maybe we've just got a little bit more we can, we can draw on maybe men, if it, if you're more confident people in general, maybe neglect those things because they don't think they're going to be needing them. But I certainly spend a lot of time thinking about that finish line when I'm doing my training and all those sort of visualizations of what it's going to feel like in those last quarter of a race or whatever. I think that preparation, know, knowing what it's going to feel like um, and doing the preparation for that hard bit at the end is really important. But I certainly think like have a little look at some psychological things i think it's really important just little techniques you can take for yourself visualization is the, is the one that i really like just seeing you know knowing what that beer is going to look like at the end or whatever it is you know <laughs> in manchester and marathon I- they give you a pint of erdinger at the end it's brilliant so oh. you can you can think you know you can whatever it is whatever your little hook is to get you through it i think those are really important yeah i like that idea of the little hook i think um I think as well that you you need to the one of the biggest things is just not being scared as if you you talk about that you're slowing down to a run walk Ian but that's good you're still moving yeah you're say, still, it's still running people, yeah, like, still there was moving. still some running in there even if you're walking if you're moving forward you're still in the race and if you're not moving forward as long as you're doing something that is proactively keeping you in the race you might be on the loo you might be fueling you might just be taking a pause to gather your breath or just to let the brain rest to go reset right here's my focus here's my next four miles if you're still mentally keeping in the game and moving forward you're still in the game and I think people often think that well now because I've got a 20 mile walk I'm out I've stopped but Uh, most of the field will be marching to the finish and that's all good that's all fine the finish is getting closer as long as you're moving forward I can't wait till Rebecca's run the West Highland Way and we talk to her about the closing stages (laughs) she's going to be like I can't not finish this I know (laughs) that zoom call with those lot (laughs) the pressure is immense yeah it's very it's very (laughs) easy for us to be judgy though because we've done it but we've also made all of us have made big mistakes and we've all messed up races we've all underpaced overpaced underfield overfield 
we've been there. So now we can be like, yeah, yeah, because we've got that, we've got that confidence now that we can get through that hard stuff. But sometimes it takes a load of DNF. Sometimes it takes a loads of learnings. And I think people kind of think, oh, because I've signed up for the race, I'm going to finish it. And it's not guaranteed. It's like one of the rare things in life now. You can't buy off Amazon 100 mile finish. It's not guaranteed. And sometimes you have to make mistakes and not finish to learn how much you want it and how you do stuff differently. So though we're laughing and saying, come on, you know, just get on and finish. We, the process is sometimes long and we get that. And that's why we're here because we want people to get the realism behind how hard the end of these, whatever distance you're running, even if it's 5k, my God, that last K. It's horrendous. Oh yeah. And if you want to laugh, you can come and watch me at the end of UTS 100k. And remind me to <laughs> Anybody, I think yeah. any of the last, apparently <laughs> the last 20k is a bit more runnable, but go and find Trish and go along yeah. the next one. Go say, you want to talk? You want to talk? How's it going? Yeah. T- tell me the smile. That will help. <laughs> Smile, remember? You said smile. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> awesome. Ian, let us know how you get on. Let us know if you plan on the pilot and we can track you. Uh, and we'd love to hear if uh, if any of this is any use at all. <laughs> this week, we catch up with a little ray of sunshine, Zuki Tandutha. Uh, we talk all about his Wainwrights Roots personal challenge. Oh, my gosh. I love people that just set themselves a challenge and go off and do their own thing. His relationship with Norse Face, with the Black Trail Runners and his exciting plans for the future. Hi, Zuki. Thanks for joining us today on the Tea and Trills podcast. Where are you? What's the view from your window? And have you been for a run today? Oh, uh, hi, Gary. Hi, Eddie. Uh, thank you so much for having me on Tea and Trails. Um, well, <laughs> my view from my window, I am uh, I'm looking out into the lake, uh, into the uh, area that I work in in Cambridge. Um, and uh, I've not been out for a run uh, so far uh, today. But I will uh, go out later. So I've got a 45 minute uh, easy jog scheduled for later on. So I'm looking forward to that. Are you a morning or an evening runner, Zuki? I think we're, we're probably going to find out later on that I'm <laughs> probably not such a morning runner. But I try to be. I try to be. But <laughs> no, I do try to be a morning runner. But um, yes. So. You're, you're fresh off Snowdonia 100k only just a week ago as well aren't you how how are the legs and the body feeling yes uh, fresh of that uh, that 100k that epic 100k in snowdonia um legs are starting to feel like they're back to normal uh, now so i managed to get a uh, easy jog in yesterday but up until friday saturday they were still a bit heavy so yeah so recovery was quite slow and my coach has obviously been uh, helpful in guiding me uh, through that process. So that's been good. Hopefully just saying, don't go running, rest. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get on? Because it was a very hot day. How did you get on in the heat? Did you find that that, found that really impacted uh, your performance? I wasn't too bad in the heat. Um, but obviously, you know, it's, it's a different challenge altogether. Um, besides the 100k that you actually have to run around. And obviously you've got the hills as well. But yeah, um, I think I, I coped well with the heat, but um, I I did let myself down though on the on the pre-race prep. I think um, on the Friday I just had a, a really busy day, and then uh, it got to the point where I uh, I didn't quite make the start line on the Saturday on, on time. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so so I actually yeah no so so I was playing catch up for most of the race, but um, I managed to finish in in a decent time, so that was good. I bet that was quite a good experience that you, hopefully at least, were catching people up all day as opposed to people going past you. Is that was that how you remember it? Yeah, so I, I was catching people up um, as I was going through. Um, I think I managed to get towards the middle-ish, uh, the people that were sort of in the middle a little bit. Um, but yeah, obviously, and, you know, just having a little laugh about my story, about me oh. uh, <laughs> being late to the start line and so on and so forth. But that was that was good fun. So it was all in good humour. It was good. So what you're uh, basically saying is you could have won it if you just started at the same time <laughs> as everybody else. No, <laughs> I am de- I'm definitely not saying that at all. No, uh, I, if if only I wish. <laughs> no, no, I, I was, I was, I, was I, I think I was approaching it um, with, um, you know, just the view in mind of just 
going out there and just having a good race really um and obviously it was my first race as well um whilst working under uh, my new coach so uh, i've got paul tierney from uh, missing link um, awesome. helping me and you know coaching me and just giving me some good guidance yeah i imagine his language was quite colorful when you told him that you missed the start <laughs> because he doesn't shy of yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> no. Probably because it was our it was our first race, so I think he's been a bit gentle. But um, you know, that's that's if you if you, if you want to know how to impress your new coach, that's that's one way to start on your first yeah. race together. Oh, <laughs> thank you. love it. Yeah. Can we rewind a little bit from that start run a few years uh, back? Where was it that you first um, you first found trail running? Is it something that you've sort of done all your life? Were you sporty at school or is it a recent um, occurrence in your athletic career? I would say I was generally quite sporty in school. So, um, you know, I would, I would play cricket uh, with my friends. I'd play um, football, um, a little bit of tennis. I used to, I used to play uh, in, in the summer as well. And then moving forward slightly, I then uh, had a close friend uh, once I joined the military. Um, uh, his name is Matthew Foster. Uh, so he was always doing ultra, ultra runs. Okay. And uh, he'd come back and, and, and tell us, you know, how he got on. And, you know, I just find it fascinating and interesting. And then I thought, you, you know, could, could I could I ever do this fifty miler that he's just done at the weekend? Could I ever do this hundred miler? And then uh, he invited me after some time to join him on a thirty two miler, I think it was, in Lalworth Cove, the Lalworth Cove Ultra. I don't know if you you know it. Quite hilly. No. So, <laughs> yeah, it's very hilly. Uh, I think that was yeah, that was my first, and then since then I've not really looked back. So, did you run before then? We presumably had to have like a level of fitness in the army anyway. So were you always running or is it was it something that just sort of like um uh you've just sort of progressed into the last few years? Um I mean generally I I was you know, we would go out for runs anyway uh, yeah. in the military. But then uh, sometimes I would go for a few runs in my spare time as well. So I, I generally did did run a little bit. But um, I just increased the distance a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. What's your What's your job in the army, Zuki? Um, so at the moment, I'm currently uh, working uh, with uh, Cambridge University Officer Training Corps. So we uh, mentor uh, young people. Uh, obviously, they're still currently in university, um, and you know we show them um, some leadership skills uh, that are taught within the military. Uh, and also we uh, do uh, take them out and uh, show them, you know, the outdoors and help them uh, develop uh, their confidence and uh, and life skills really in general. Yeah. Oh, it's really a terrible role. Yeah. Do you start talking about ultra running within about 10 minutes when you meet them? You go, join the army. <laughs> and also, do you know I run? <laughs> I've run a marathon. Uh, yeah. There's times where the the, uh, the North Face trainers are noticeable. And obviously, most of my kit is North Face because I'm supported <laughs> by them. So then, yeah, so that, that starts uh, becoming a conversation a little bit. Gary calls that a heavy <laughs> flex, don't you, Gary? Just, oh, these are trainers. Something I wear <laughs> for my other yeah. my recreation. You've got a target job. on your back, though, haven't you? When you come in with a heavy flex, then people kind of want to take you down too. So yeah, if you're dripping in North Face kit, then everyone's gonna yeah, they'll, they'll have their eye on you, Zugi. <laughs> you're being quite modest about your um your ultra achievements so far, but um on our on our recon, you see, I slip in a good military word there. On our oh. recon on you, we were finding. <laughs> Coast to coast, the Wayne Wax route, now UTMB, Snowdonia 100K, also the summer spine race. You've done some pretty big challenges already. Uh, how did you find the summer spine? But yeah, the, the summer spine, um, I found that uh, very, very challenging. Um, and it was in the middle of the summer as well. So Super again, hot. You, know, you have the heat. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very hot. Um, but um, overall, I really enjoyed it, and I, I just, you know, I, I think this is where um, I think my, my prep could have been a bit better for it. Um, you know, I, I, I could have tried to squeeze in a few recies here and there, and so on and so forth. But sometimes, obviously, life happens, and that's not always possible. But I, um, no, I, I gave I gave it my best shot at the time, and it was it was really good. Would you want to take on the winter one? Uh, yes, <laughs> I would. I would love to do the winter one. I would love to do the winter one. 
but uh, it's just uh, obviously I just need to work out a, a suitable time uh, with work, etc. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's a yeah. it's a chunk of time, uh, mm. either as holiday or blagging it off from work, isn't it? I'm, I'm hoping to make that start line for a winter one uh, over the next few years or so. Yeah. All of these big challenges, you know, you you do all the training, the commitment, the recce's, and then, like you said, you need to take some blag some time off work or take a holiday. It's super hard to yeah. to fit everything in. I'd love to talk about the coast to coast though. How because that was not a, a race as such, but um, was it like did you go for an FKT or was it more of a personal challenge? Um, that one was more of a of a personal challenge. Um, but I do need to investigate whether I've got a chance of an FKT after I did it, because obviously I, I think I finished it in, um, so it was 192 miles I, I finished, and I did it in about uh, six days. So I think okay. it's about 70 hours. It's almost drive off somewhere. So I think it's about 70 hours of moving time altogether. So I just need to investigate that a bit more. And oh, see where, where that stands in with regards to an FKT. And how did you approach it? Was it a solo? I know there's, I don't know what the details are for all these things. If it's a solo, unsupported, supported, what was your approach to it? Um, it was solo, uh, self-supported. Um, I think my my approach was to try and do it as quickly as possible. Bearing in mind, I had a week, so I had from the Monday until the Sunday. So obviously I had to be in work on the mon- the following Monday after that. <laughs> I so bet you I, were yeah, good. Was, uh... yeah, I'm good for work on Monday, guys. Well, I yeah. can do anything as long as it's sitting down <laughs> near tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was just to you know just to give it a go uh, and and see how how I how I get on you know as, as quickly as possible. But uh, obviously, you know, with most of these things, um, sometimes uh, they don't go quite according to plan. So I think I had to have a pit stop after 24 hours. Um, I, I stopped for a bit in uh, in a local uh, B&B uh, just to, you know, readjust my kit. Plus, okay. you know, from start, I think I started around half 10 on Monday and it rained from half 10 all the way until about two o'clock in the morning. Obviously, you're moving oh, from the Lake District goodness. at this point. Uh, and then moving on then towards um, uh, Sharp, um, I think it, it was a bit more, the weather became, became a bit more pleasant, uh, but still, you know, still a bit rough. Um, and um, because obviously I was, you know, carrying everything that I needed uh, to, 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 to keep myself going. Uh, so that was another challenge itself. You know, uh, the backpack, the, the backpack is a bit on the heavy side. Um but um, luckily, obviously, I, I had I had good kit obviously with the support from the, thankful for the support from the North Face and um, you know the, the kit you know stood put me in good stead basically it uh, it was good. Did you plan on did you plan on staying places or did you have like a sleep system and bivy bag and sleeping bag? No, uh, um, the plan in t- the sleeping plan was um, to see how I get on. <laughs> and obviously, I had, I had the, I had, I had, I had the prominent towns uh, to hit. So I knew that um, you know, as long as I get to the next town, then I will see how I am and how I feel when I get to that town, um, and and just make a judgment call there and then. Um, and um, I think by the end of it, I'd stayed in two B and Bs overall. Um, yeah, so it, it 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 was it was it was it was to get out there, explore, and move as fast as you can to get to the other end, to the other side. So, is the route <laughs> is the route way marked? Are there like posts along the way, or were you having to do navigation? So luckily, I I had the the route on my own as a GPX file on my watch, so that was easy to follow. Obviously, I had uh, the map and compass as well as backup. Um, but the the route is 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 quite um, it's quite easy. To, do, to follow um i would say it's easily identifiable mm. um and um and it's, it obviously it's, it's a very historic route and one you know one one that one that should be respected as such um yeah no it was, it was great and um obviously because it was winter i didn't quite 
see too many uh, of the of the scenic uh, views that people <laughs> did. You see talk anything? About. <laughs> <laughs> I saw <laughs> I saw some things. <laughs> I saw your trainers. <laughs> and, uh, <a> few, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so a bit of my trainers, you know, a bit of my kit. There were a few locals that I I, I bumped into. They thought I was a bit mad doing it in, in January, <laughs> and uh, so but no, that was that was quite entertaining. <laughs> I love this. This is perfect. Perfect winter spine conditions. You seem very yeah. happy out, not being able to see anything, not seeing anybody. On your own. Just one wandering around, waiting till somebody <laughs> lets you sleep yeah. in their house. It's perfect. A, a week away from the from the kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, to be on your own for a week. That's wonderful. Did you did you carry a pebble from uh west to east? I'm always curious about that. Oh yes, I I, I picked up my pebble from St. B's. Uh, and I, you know, it was, you know, that was closely guarded, so that was in my, uh, yeah, in my, one of my pockets on the, on the, on the chest. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. that sounds wonderful. I just love the idea of all these. You know, we cheat, we race things, and the FKTs, but just have that personal challenge. I just, I, I love the idea of that. I really, that, that's one thing from all of this FKT. The emergence and the the rise of the FKT, I just think that's a real positive thing for our sport. But what is completely different is UTS um, Snowdonia. That's kind of chalk and cheese to coast to coast why yeah what was it that attracted you to that i think is it something like twenty thousand feet and about sixty seven thousand, sixty seven 67 miles so yeah massive massive difference yeah the uts so that was uh 60 yeah 67 miles i clocked up by the end of it but i think it's meant to be 64 ish um okay. but yeah no um again so with with the uts i was sort of thinking okay uh, you know uh, I could do with uh, another challenge somewhere that's again a bit hilly. The advertisement that they had as well kind of it does easily draw you in, and uh, and also in the back of my mind as well. I would love to uh, make, to be able to be on a start line in uh, UTMB as well. So uh, so it, it it ticked those boxes. So you got the U- UTMB chance the chance to be obviously in the UTMB. You know the the great scenery as well. Obviously in Wales, it was a good it was a good challenge to to take on. Where you live, you mentioned Cambridge for work. I don't see I can't visualize many mountains around there, Zuki. How do you how do you train for a hilly hilly race <laughs> where you live? No, it's 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 not hilly at all. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's quite it's quite it's quite a flat area where I live. Um, so um, obviously with the, the work with um, with the work that uh, my coach is, is helping me with, um, it's um, we we try to do uh, some hill rope sessions. Some of some hill rope, hill rope sessions have to be done on the treadmill, um, and then also um, there is uh, one or two hilly areas uh, near where I live. Not too many. <laughs> so I, I spent some time around there as well. What does it? What does a hilly treadmill session look like for you, Suki? So one of the hilly treadmill sessions that we did was an hour and ten minutes altogether, but it was um, it was broken down. It was broken down, so it wasn't the whole hour and ten minutes on the treadmill and hill and an incline. <laughs> I so love that. Down. So it was. Don't suggest that to my coach. Though. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, on an incline for about forty minutes. Uh, the recent, the last one before UTS, actually, it was on an incline for forty minutes, going at a moderate pace, and then uh, 20, 20 minutes uh, was uh, easy to to finish off. And then, sorry, yeah. So there was on an incline for forty minutes, and then twenty minutes moderate, and then twenty minutes easy. Or sorry, the remainder of the time easy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. Were you running on the treadmill or were you hiking? Uh, I was running and very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I was running and very sweaty. And, it's uh, disgusting, the sweat on the treadmill, yeah. isn't it? It's like, how uh, do you, uh, how is that possible? That is that how much we sweat outside, but it just evaporates? Oh, because wow. I'm, I'm like, I have to yeah. like carry my clothes. Like they're like heavy. I'm the same. And I, that's actually the question that I was asking myself. I was thinking, do I sweat this much when I'm outside? <laughs> is this like just a, you know, an indoor, a, a, a treadmill thing? So I'm, I'm sure someone has an explanation somewhere. Is, but, um, yeah. Was that <laughs> treadmill, was that treadmill in army barracks or is that one you've got in your house? Was it a public arena in which you were heavily sweating? 
No, it, it, it was a it was a public arena. It was a public <laughs> arena. So yeah, so <laughs> not not the greatest of sights. Because <laughs> I've got a tra- I've got a tra- I'm very lucky. I've got a treadmill in our back room, and so I can I can sweat heavy, but myself. But I often think and grunt and shout and go. Oh, I don't yeah. want to do anymore. But I think I don't think I could do that in a gym because I think I'd be asked to leave. Or I'd have to spend a lot of time cleaning. I think it's underrated, though. Hills on a treadmill, if you live in a flat area, are really, really good. Especially if you're doing something like Snowdonia or looking at one of the UTMB races. You can you can really bury yourself in an hour on the treadmill. They're a good bang for your buck um, as yeah. well. We've alluded to a little bit, um, Suki. Can you tell us about how your relationship with North Face came about? Mainly because I'm so jealous because... I <laughs> love the North Face trainers. I actually did the yeah. Winter Spine, and I keep meaning to email North Face because I did the Winter Spine in their like gator shoe, and mm-hmm. I'm not seeing anyone else. Because I'm like, do you know your your shoe has done the spine, and I could give you feedback, but I'm not sure they'd be interested. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I love their trainers. Tell me about how. Yeah, how did that relationship come about? Yeah, no, I was going to say, please do email them. I'm sure they'll be happy with that feedback. And and by the way, the, the shoe that you're talking about, the Flight Guard, the Vective Flight Guard, is, it's an amazing shoe. It's, yeah, isn't it's, it? it's, it's, it's if amazing. You do, shoe. Yeah, if yeah. you do do the Winter Spine, I would say get, but mm. also get the size bigger for the back yeah. end of the race because yeah. I loved it till about two, till the last portion. And then I just wanted half a size bigger, but I didn't have any blisters, nothing. Yeah. And I I had dry feet, everything. It's just when my foot swelled in the last day that I was like, oh, I wish I could put a bucket and take them off by then because of the zip combo. I was like, I can't, I can't get them off. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> Tell us, yeah, how did that how did yeah. that relationship come about? So the relationship between the North Face and I, so uh, obviously I'm one of the explorers uh, for the North Face. I'm, you know, ambassador, uh, part of the Explorer team. Um, so that, that relationship started um, whilst I was uh, working with, uh, the black trail runners and uh obviously i'm also one of the crew members for the black trail runners um and uh at the time i think the north face were supporting the black trail runners podcast and uh and they had asked you know uh, for a few members from the from the from the community to send send some videos of them running and i think they were we were going to feature in one of their ads a month or two before that i'd recently finished um so this is around lockdown so i finished the 874 miles in 29 days so that's one of the things i wrote obviously that running wise there uh yeah and then um i think by about next day or two then obviously um um someone uh from marketing um at, at the north face obviously then started uh, following 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 me um i think social media and other bits and then we started connecting uh, yeah, it's someone I'm truly grateful um, uh, uh, to as well, actually, obviously for the opportunities that they've given me. Uh, yeah, so his name is uh, Jack. So he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. Oh, he saw, uh, he's, well, he was, I, I think they probably would say the same about you. They saw you and thought, this guy uh, is positive energy. <laughs> we love it. Uh, what was your North Face shoe of choice yeah. for Snowdonia last weekend? The shoe of choice last weekend was uh, the Vective uh, Sky uh, shoe. So, um, you know, I, I went to that one just because of the technical trails mm. within uh, mm. UTS. I needed just that little bit more grip. Um, so, And that, that shoe uh, obviously uh, gave me that. So it's really, really comfortable, great shoe. They're a super great shoe. And do they? Do you sort of give them feedback of their kit and their shoes as well? Is that the sort of way the relationship works? Feedback is, uh, is encouraged. Um, and also, obviously, it's on the on the on the marketing perspective as well. Obviously, um, you know, we have things like social media, Instagram, etc. So every now and again, you know, we obviously show whoever's uh, are following us, you know, what we what we're wearing and so on and so forth. Yeah, it's a lovely story actually. Mm-hmm. How you got involved with uh, North Face? I'd love to know a bit more about the Black Trail Runners, though. You know, it's super important. I see it. We talk about it with female representation on the show quite a lot, but also, yeah, you look at the start of most start lines and uh, it pretty much is still dominated with 
people like me yeah if you could share a bit about black trail mm. runners for our audience that would be great yeah so um uh, black trail runners is a, a campaign uh, charity uh, group and uh, seeking to increase participation um from um within uh, the uh, black community and also from uh, uh, brown people as well so you just they're trying to get more people of color to uh, you know to be able to to, to go out, out outdoors and, and and enjoy the trails as well they offer support in some key areas and obviously in, in some key areas and um, some of these areas are enabling access uh, just making sure that um, uh, people have uh, you know access to the trails and in, encourage uh, people and also support people with you know with uh, race entry fees um, and obviously uh, some kits as well so they they, they do support uh, so they offer kit grants so they they do support so yeah if, if anyone is listening in and they're able to support uh, black trail runners in any way you know please reach out to them and, and get in touch with them I saw on Instagram this morning, I don't know, you know, sometimes things flash up that have already happened, but there was a Black Trail Runners race. Um, and then there was a lot of feedback from that of people that have never done anything like that out on the trails. I loved all the footage um, of all different shapes, sizes. Um, was that, was that, has that just happened this weekend? Yeah, so that happened uh, on the same weekend as the uh, UTS. So that was uh, Black to the Trails. Um, yeah, and uh, shout out to Black Joy Runners for putting on such a good show, and that looked am- looked amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I think you know, hopefully, it's a sign of things to come, and hopefully, the uh, the, the the you know, they grow bigger and 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 better, and go on to put on more shows like that. Because and it's much it, needed. It, yeah, yeah, it's much needed because. There shouldn't be any barriers to, you know, the the outside world is outside our front door. We should all be able to access the trails and run on the trails. And I think if we are, Gary and I, um, and you we're out there running, we feel like, well, everybody can do this. But of course, yeah. you know, there are barriers. There is the cost. We talk about North Face trainers, but there everything everything is at a cost and a price. And also, um, it's when we talk about women and getting into ultra running as well, if you're not in that world, it can look, it can be a very sort of um, frightening is not the right word, but how you make your first step into it, that's often the hardest step as well. So I think yeah. things like Black Trail Runners opening it up and saying, everybody's welcome, come along, see if you enjoy it. And from what I saw the footage, we'll try and repost it on our and Trails. It was the biggest smiles. Yeah. And we were, what a party. It looked like a party. Everyone was having how a great do you, time. Uh, how do you inspire people if you don't see your people out there doing stuff? So I think Black Trail Runs, it's, it's awesome. That's it, yeah. They, they, they truly are amazing. Uh, and, you know, just to, to go back to kind of what you touched on there a little bit, Eddie, um, you know, people will say, oh, yeah, but... Everyone can go outside and, you know, enjoy the trails. But when you obviously look at the nuances and it's not quite as easy as that, you know, obviously, like we touched on before, you know, we have the barriers that you pointed out, uh, Eddie, uh, rightly so. Um, you have the barriers, you know, and that's what um, that's, people, that's what that's what people tend to forget sometimes, mm. you know. Mm. Um, yeah. So, uh, and obviously, yeah, I, I think kudos to Black Trail Runners for, for, for doing what they're doing. Yeah. Could I talk about Bob Graham round, Zuki? I know you've had an attempt. Yes. Um, I'm yes. just looking at the stats. <laughs> I, know, I know you've. I'm, I'm laughing, I'm I'm laughing Zuki, because Gary is obsessed with the Bob Graham round, and he, I, I don't think he mentioned it no, 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 for a couple no, 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 of no, no, podcasts. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, the stats yeah. on the UTS: sixty-seven miles, twenty thousand feet. That's not a million miles away from. Bob Graham stats. Is that something on your horizon still? I did have a go in the Bob Graham round. So I did have a go uh, in uh, October 2022. Yes, I had a go. And um, I did it in 24 hours and 50 minutes. So I need to go back. Well, you've got Gary's contact number now. Shout him up. He knows the route like the back of his hand. He can get you around that. Throw in Hit a pair of North Keith. Face trainers. <laughs> It'll do anything. <laughs> uh, definitely. I'll, 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 I'll be giving you a shout, Gary. Definitely. Yeah. Was there anything, though? Yeah. That you, can you look back at anything and reflect, go, oh, yeah, that cost us time. Was it navigation? Or I suppose, did you just come up an hour short on the day? Is anything you can kind of pinpoint? It, it was a combination of, um, I came up short on the day a little bit, if I'm being honest. Because obviously, as much as I, I like to celebrate, you know, the wins, I have to celebrate the, the, the failures as well and obviously learn from them as well. 
Um, but yeah, I think um, I think on, on the day I came up a little bit short, and um, I think also looking back, I, um, I I I I should have fought a bit harder to get those recce's in there, okay. and um, you know, with my time and just structured it a bit better, and um, you know, got, get those recce's in there, and and I think they would have paid off massively. Um, yeah, looking back, and especially when I was going around, I was noticing that myself, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah you know, I should have done a bit better here. Yeah, is it quite a new relationship you've got with Paul uh, on your on your coaching team now? I think this bodes well for future because everything we've talked about so yes. far, you go, it's, it's, the preparation wasn't brilliant. <laughs> Paul can help you enough too. I'm pretty sure he knows the route very well. Although you can see that there's a theme here, isn't it? I like the theme, though. Yeah. I think you know no, I, I'm, I... your loose, your um, relaxed approach uh, is a great is a great asset. I wish there were more people that didn't take trail running quite so seriously. I like that, but I do think there are key points which, like Bob Graham navigation and Snowdonia getting to the start line on time, these are little things that are easily uh, easily solved, and then yeah. you'll be <laughs> you'll be smashing it. What have you got planned now for the rest of this year? Again, obviously, you know, with Paul's guidance, he can help me get ready for this. It's uh, Dragon's Back in September. Oh, Hopefully no. I can make See the you start there, line. Zuki. I think, I think we know everybody <laughs> on the start line, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so I've got that later this year. Sorry, before that, uh, rewind. In July, I've got um, the um, St. Sunday Mountain Race um, with uh, the uh, Lake District Sky Trails. Uh, which I'm the ambassador uh, of uh, as well. So I've got that in July. So I'm getting ready for that. So that's what? 30Ks. Okay, 30K. Um, around the lake. Yeah, around the Their lake. Their race district. series, so, yeah. it looks awesome. They've got some real kind of uh, Scarfeld Sky Race, Pinnacle, like running it really, really good and mixed uh, set of events those guys put on. Looks yes. Yeah, it's really good. It, it, look, it looks amazing. Um, and in the end, they're working hard, obviously, behind the scenes, you know, to improve things, tweak things here and there. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully I can take part in the other races in the future as well that they have. Well, now I know how old you are, Zuki. We can be friends at the Dragon's Back race. You're not in the, yeah. in the V50 <laughs> category. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Sounds good, Gary. Sounds good. That'll be it. That'll be it. <laughs> oh, best of luck. Yeah. Best of luck with all the training because, yeah, you're going to need those mountain legs for that uh, race. I'm super scared how the, how the week drags on and the fatigue of my body. But, yeah, we are coast to coast. You're pretty well accustomed to that. And the spine race. Watch your back, yeah. Gary. The smiling assassin will come past you. <laughs> going, I started three hours late, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, give, 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 give him a gel on the way, on the way past. Oh, that's kind. I love that. You don't have to. Just a shove. <laughs> just a shove. Yeah, just not on crib gock, please. Don't. <laughs> no. Let's do the quick five. Suki's going to nail these, I know. Yeah. Okay, dog, Suki. Oh, no. We... <laughs> no pressure. Okay. These are all super relaxed. No wrong answers either. Every show, we end with our quick five questions. Number one is, it doesn't have to be the last movie you watch, but maybe the last movie you remember watching. With five children at home it's t it seems to be children's movies that i'm remembering <laughs> just dropped in the fact he's got five kids at home. Oh, no, wow. wonder he did. no wonder he's going off for these challenges <laughs> <laughs> so i would say uh moana is a favorite yeah moana is a favorite i like moana Classic. moana ah. is a favorite my kids did moana the musical in their like theater group so it sort of killed it for me because i heard those songs so many times and now they're on my like spotify mm. repeat playlist all the time <laughs> suki what's the age range of your kids um, so the age range is, we're, we're a blended family, obviously. Um, age range is um, 11, the eldest, and then two girls are nine, um, and the four-year-old, uh, and then we've got a one-month-old as well. Oh, so, oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> you are in the trenches at the coalface of a busy family there. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Great sleep no, it's, it's, training. It's lovely though, you know, women's shopping for the world. And uh, you know, there's there's never a dull moment, basically. 
Never a quiet moment. Never a quiet moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should ask this next question to our guest's partners, but yeah, well, you can uh, answer this one, Suki. On a scale of one to 10, yeah. how good a driver do you think you are? Um, I would say eight. I don't want to be too confident. Oh. Too confident? He's a military man. <laughs> He's a military man. He's probably had to take like driving tests and he can drive like tanks and do like that emergency turn they do on Netflix when they like turn the car really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm not as cool as that. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure my, my wife would not agree that I'm an eight. She'll probably put me at about six or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll give you a seven. There you go. Split the difference. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Seven. What <laughs> what chore do you despise doing the most? I, I, I do have to feed out know, twenty three chickens every morning. Oh my goodness Almost morning, me. I should say. <laughs> but, but, Anything yeah. else? <laughs> but but uh, no, I no, I do enjoy that. I do enjoy that. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the list now. Maybe. Well, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be in the garden. Uh, poo patrol on the in, in the garden after the dogs. So we that, just yeah, talked so about this we, do, we need we need more intel now. So we've got there's five kids outside. There's twenty three chickens. Uh, there's dogs. How many dogs? Uh, two dogs. Uh, okay. Lovely dogs uh, and four guinea pigs. Oh. Suki, oh. I don't know how you got any time to do anything other than just managing the home. It sounds crazy. <laughs> no, it's 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 lovely. No, it's 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 beautiful. It's a beautiful family. Yeah. Yeah. If you could learn any language in a week, which one would it be? Um, in a week, probably Chinese, if Ooh. possible. In a week, mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I wondered this. I wondered this if Chinese would be your best bet because it opens up a world of uh, communication, doesn't it? And it's such a hard That's language it. that yeah, it's, it, mm. yeah, it's a good call. There's a, I don't know if you've ever seen him. There's a guy on YouTube who has just got an amazing knack of picking up languages, and his whole YouTube channel is basically he goes into uh, maybe like a, a, a local neighbourhood where tourists wouldn't normally go and he'll order some food or something or buy something but within like a regional dialect as well and he goes up to china and japan and france everywhere but he picks it and the people are just amazed like how fluent and he picks up like the little local nuances too he's got a really interesting oh. youtube channel that's one of my guilty pleasures watching yeah. <laughs> watching this guy on youtube <laughs> okay last question every week we'll mm. share this podcast over on instagram and many other platforms too but yeah it's your choice suki what would be your instagram story music of choice what song would you like music of choice I would probably say Jay Z. Okay. Say, yeah, Jay Jay Z song. Yeah. Um, and I would say the song being uh, "Hard Knock Life." Yeah, "Hard Knock Life." Oh, oh nice. Like <laughs> Kids will like it too, and the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would like it. <laughs> Everyone would like it. Suki, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. What a joy it's been getting to know you. I feel we've yeah. only just scratched the surface now. I've got so many more questions. Yeah. You'll have uh, to come <laughs> you'll have to come back on again, maybe after Dragon's Back, you and Gary. After can, Dragon's uh, Back race, yeah. You, yeah, you can share yeah. the share the mics about uh, your time in the tents together. Best of luck with everything <laughs> you've got planned this year. We look forward to following all your adventures. Yeah, thanks, yes, Suki. Thank Take you care. so much. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Bye. Yeah, please check out our Strava Club if you want to be in for a chance of a shout out uh we've got over a thousand people shout there, with kudos you know. gary might even give you some kudos i don't Whoa. give kudos out on strava unless <laughs> unless i see a decent performance in there oh you a tight, with, a kudos a bit tight with the kudos <laughs> <laughs> well, again, Rafa, two out, two out of three ain't bad Rafa uh wow again another hundred now i've requested miles. to follow you Rafa. gary's really lovely and he's, I said, Rafa's coming off unless uh, he come. We want to, I've requested to follow you. I want to see these deets because I've just done a seven and a half a mile run early this morning and you'd done 36 miles. 
what time did you get up to go and do that? I want more. I want answers. Well, he could be in a different conundrum. part. He's in so part, requested I think he's to follow in... you and I might need a Zoom call. He might be in a he different is... time zone. I know all this. Yeah, I'm just yes, making yes, some yes. drama, Gary. Stop okay. talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, 189 miles and 26 hours, or well, just under 27 hours, to be honest, 56 minutes uh, of exercise. My goodness me. But Ian Oldham um, topped the charts for the elevation. I know Ian's been down in Wales, so he's had a blast uh, running up and down those mountains there with 21,381 feet. Yeah, thanks, everybody who's part of our Strava Club. And well done, everybody who has topped the charts. We had a message from our dear friends at Green Runners all about their running out of time relay, Ben Nevis to Big Ben. The running out of time relay is Britain's biggest sporting celebration of climate action and nature taking place between June the 10th and July the 11th. Thousands of runners, walkers, wheelers and cyclists will relay the baton 2,661 kilometres from Ben Nevis to Big Ben. The relay travels through 50 cities and towns in some of our most beautiful countryside. Head over to www.runningoutoftime.com to find out more details gaza you've got your eyes on a on a segment yeah yeah there's unfortunately for me <laughs> just me being lazy on the sunday where it's really close to where i live um i'm away that day but yeah i'm gonna enter um one of the bits up in the newcastle area hopefully from the town where we're to the sage in gates and i've got my eye on that i think it's good oh i just need to say the uh, web address is running hyphen out Hyphen, oh, sorry. Sorry. Hyphen time dot off, com. Like <laughs> I'll put it. <laughs> I will put the uh, link in the show notes. But yeah, check it out. You know, it's something simple. I think we can all help and support. Sometimes activism, it can be a big, big and scary. I don't go on marches or take part in any kind of civil disobedience, but this is something relatively easy. Not anymore. Uh, we can, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we can all support this. And, you know, 5k i think a lot of our listeners that is uh within them so yeah if it's close to you i don't want to drive 300 miles to do a 5k run you know be, no, be... that would be sort of <laughs> against the um i'm hoping i'm going to talk at the centurion running wendover woods festival uh, on the 7th and 8th of july and the baton is going to the festival and doing a lap of the festival awesome. so i'm hoping to hook up yeah with david in reading and run it into wendover as long as he promises not anything faster than a six minute and a rinse day because he's smoking fast <laughs> he's gonna rinse me i arrive at wendover woods the bat on where's the bat on i dropped it but i've left it i can't get it guys you have to go back and get it I keep oh yeah up. a bit of pressure with the baton isn't there where'd you keep the bat on i mean under your arm in your hand in your backpack in in yeah. my hand. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll pop a link in the show notes no come this week Unfortunately, no, has the, big, has the big bobble hat uh, winner claimed his prize? Did he slid into my DMs? Oh, hey. DMs. Can't wait to see it at a jaunty angle. He's a big bobble hat Somewhere. fan too, so it's really nice. Oh, love that. I love that. But yeah, no competition this week, but stay tuned. We're going to have a competition coming up from X Miles, our latest Patreon partner. And Silver, the head torch guys are going to supply some prizes too. So two separate competitions coming up. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Wow, we've had a, a jam-packed show and two good weeks we've both had. Yeah, but what have you got coming up, Eddie? Roll it in. Well, I've got my last long, long run tomorrow. I'm debate. I need to look at... It's such a beautiful day, Gary. I'm fuming at you because it's blue sky. The birds... I could be having the best long run today. Well, yeah, and now I've got to do it tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to open up the weather app live to see what it's like tomorrow. <laughs> Blue skies. So I'm going to do, um, yeah, a long run tomorrow. I mean, really, I'm a, I'm a greedy runner, Gary, because really I should be running, you know, the same max elevation to runnable for Southlands Way. But I just love going up the hills so much. Love running in the mountains that I'm like, probably will go out and do too much elevation. But I'm going to, I'll say maybe four hours. I would, my, I don't. I would quite like to do five, but I do think that I don't need to do five and that'll probably be more tiring. I don't need yeah. to do a 30 mile run because I've done um, so much volume going into the spine and then the spine that I think I'd be better to do like a 20 mile hilly run, 20 plus, um, and then be okay 
to do hill reps two days later than running longer and then being tired. So I think I'll rein myself back in a bit and uh, do four hours tomorrow, but in the hills. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to do my last big, long, big, long block of hill sessions. I can so feel those paying off and paying off the fact that I've done them really controlled and really focused on form. Brynn is really jealous because we did an easy run together and he cannot run like easy. I can now run easy up a hill. I can choose not to be out of breath and go slow and controlled and keep running. And he's like, I can't, I, he goes run ahead. He's like, I can't, I've just got to get it over and done with. Oh, and then wow. he's, <laughs> this, doesn't, this doesn't bode well for our racing He'll as a duo, price does for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you've got to be able to go slower. Anyway, we're working on that. So I think I'm going to do six by eight over last or five by 15. I haven't decided, but it'll be a long, a long session. Ooh, yoy, yoy. And that'll mean a long eight. downhill too. 5.15, that's what I did a couple of weeks ago. And I did that. I enjoyed that with a long downhill to finish, which was good as well. But you need to feel, you need some serious velo hmm. uh, shots for that. So yeah, that will be in there. Then I'm going to do a sort of two and a half hour flattish run. No dogs, no fun on that one. And then two big strength, heavier weights. And then the rest of it will all be easy. And then I'll drop yes. the weights. I probably won't even, next week will just be like core and then a shorter long run. And yeah. then I like a two week taper, but my first week of the taper is just, you know, a 10% less of volume. Yeah. So the long run will just be three hours. The hill reps will be like four by five minutes. And it, and then the next week, then I like a really big taper, the week of a hundred mile. I, I don't, I'm fine. Not really doing much at all. Just like 10 minutes, 15 minutes here and there. For me, it's all I part like. of the training. Two that, that- that appreciating what's the ta- the task ahead. Yeah, I don't really stress about that week before. Two more weeks of training, one week of taper. So, and out of the four, I'll run two. Sometimes you know, you if you, if you enter a race, it's it is what it is. But if you left it, my own devices, I'd much prefer say maybe do two, four, three hour runs or something like that, as opposed to one big like seven hour day. Yeah, and fitting that in when you're busy with juggling work and kids and stuff, that takes a lot. And then you just don't get the recovery as well. If I do four hours, I can come home, have a shower, even a sneaky nap, Gary, I could fit in there and then be able to do my evening duties. So, yeah, I think that's probably what I'll do and um, and just enjoy some peace. So quiet. And I'll get it all done and then Bryn can go crazy at the weekend doing his long run. What about what about you? You gonna have a little bit of downtime? No. This <laughs> week again. What the hell? Oh goodness me. You know, you hatch these plans years in advance and then when they actually come to fruition. You're not you running think, the whole no, no, it's a relay. I was like, what? I thought <laughs> Yeah, I've got leg four of the hard mode 110 relay team and judging by the which is actually initially i was a bit oh goodness me i'm going to be running through the night but looking at the forecast for next week i think i've got the uh the bonus leg there because it's going to be pretty hot apparently on the moors so yeah a bit of shade and a bit of uh darkness is going to be welcome and it's also if we do well will be the glory leg too i'll be bringing it in i'll be bringing <laughs> bringing it home what that'll be years two weekends in a row to get a podium finish let's see Who's on your team? Chris is. I think Chris is doing like one. He was in the uh, Facebook group actually sharing his picture with his Teen Trills uh, t-shirt on up on oh, Hill Villain the other week. Um, Adam Bridges, another friend of mine. Uh, Neil Robbo Robinson, my old county tops partner and Bob Graham partner. And then, yeah, me. I'll be running from, I think it's Lordstones all the way to the end, about 30 miles. I think it's, there is obviously some uphill involved, but it's a net downhill that I've got. So my little legs, <laughs> completely opposite the last weekend, I've got to do some some running. That's going to be, I'm looking forward to it actually, because, you know, there's running on the Lake 100. There's going to be days on the Dragon's Back Race where it's not all 3,000 metres of elevation, 4,000 metres of elevation, whatever it is. So I think it's a healthy test for me to mix things up. And yeah, it'd just be awesome. I've got no idea what the competition's like in this uh, relay. But to get on the podium, maybe even win it, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. Big words. I like it. <laughs> we probably will collectively be going quite faster than the majority of the runners. Uh, and me being leg four, 
there's a good chance I probably don't. I might not actually see anybody. It'd be like a time trial. It's going to be quite a lonely race. But if I do see you out on the trails, yes, yeah, say hello. I love my Tea and Trails podcast t shirt. Will you say on. hello back or will you like just push them out the way and say, I'm yeah. racing? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I might not have many words, but I'm quite polite. Yes, I will see. <laughs> oh, back. Running wise during the week, probably just the same as last week, to be honest. Um, Serve me well, keep the miles low, maybe something that's a marathon effort. Probably on the trails, though. I don't think I'll just go out and do six mile flat. I don't think I'll do that. Yeah. That is that. And good luck to everybody who's racing this week, uh, weekend, sorry. And a shout out to Craig Anderson and his friends. They're having an annual Backyard Ultra Challenge on Saturday. And a few of them are going for 52 miles. Yeah, and that sounds awesome. And again, after we had a chat with Karen, and that if I was ever going to do a simula- like a, a Backyard Ultra, something like this would be right at my street, that simulation event. So yeah, best of luck. Hopefully you all get your 52 miles. So yeah, good luck, Wayne, Craig, Douglas, Bex, Tam, and everyone else. And to Harold too, who's the main man and the organiser. Yeah, good luck, good luck. There's so many people racing this weekend. Yeah, best of luck, everybody. That's the end of another show. We've got to go. But yeah, thanks for listening and thanks to all our partners and Patreons, new and old. Be kind to your future self. And don't forget to like, subscribe, Follow and a share would be ears. Stay safe on the trails, everyone. Run wise, run well, and don't overdo it. Just be steady, Eddie. Listen to your body as well, of course, as your fave podcast. Make sure you refuel with lots of tea and maybe a scone or a nice bun. Yum. We are a Boy, safe oh space here God. to overindulge. <laughs> Rin had a few days off and he made two cakes during those days off and we ate them both within, I would say, 48 hours. We are a safe space to overindulge the Sutton household. My name is Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Twitz. (laughs) And that was episode 23 of Tea and Trails. (laughs) What tickled you so much there? (laughs) It's your pause and you're like, and here I am <laughs> <laughs> and see <laughs> done <laughs> <I love it. laughs> you should leave that in